Hello, my name is Evan Kober. I'll be teaching you about my topic, Threat Landscape, through the research that I've done and through the beautiful illustrations that I have made to go alongside it. First things off, we must ask what exactly is Threat Landscape to get the picture? This is a great question. Threat Landscape is potential as well as identified cyber threats that would affect this sector, a group of users, or for a certain amount of time. Examples of, of sectors would be in industrial sectors such as factories or electrical sectors such as power plants. An example of a group of users would be the ol older people as scam calls mainly go after them for their naivety about technology. Lastly, an example for an amount of time would be DDoS attacks which take advantage, which actually take out servers in order to stop people from using them for a certain amount of time. Now we move on to what threat landscape exactly includes. This would be vulnerabilities, malware, as well as groups of hackers and their techniques that represent a danger. The danger being the possession of information, security levels, and geopolitical factors. The geopolitical factors being that some organizations only attack people in certain locations like during times of war. Lastly, we'll talk about what exactly influences the landscape. First is the discovery of vulnerabilities. This allows cyber criminals new attack abilities Next is the release of new software that includes additional functions. These could end up having vulnerabilities that our criminals will make use of. Next is new hardware. This would be similar to new software. Next is new ways to process data. A good example of this is cloud services and edge computing. This is like s the second half to new hardware, so it could take much of the same issues hardware we could have. Lastly is global events. One good and recent example is the COVID-19 pandemic, which caused companies to make a major change to their infrastructure. Now that we're done talking about what threat landscape is, we can now talk about what that landscape was like in the past. This pertains to periods in the 1980s and 1990s. I might be talking about the macro virus and Morris worms as they are good examples of threat landscape, but I also bring up other examples as well. So first up is the macrovirus. These came about thanks to standardization of technologies. Macroviruses allowed malware to spread through email attachments. Macroviruses took advantage of the fact that Microsoft Office products had a distribution increase with the adoption of email. This is why in the 1990s businesses were increasingly infected by macroviruses as they had standardized company-wide use of email. Next up is the Morris Worm, created by Robert Tappan Morris, a student from Cornell University, which was released in 1988. This will be the first time malware was distributed through the internet. This malware mainly attacked computers using a specific version of the Unix OS, but had many vectors attack, which is why it spread so wide. One main attack that used was the backdoor on the internet using the mail system and a bug in a program that identified users. Now we'll talk about other examples. First example being from the 1980s. These are just boot sectors and file infectors on floppy disks. These spread mainly because of computer adaptions and expansions. This allowed the email to be distributed easier and for an increase in volume. A second example is the malware Jerusalem. This is a DOS program, so it attacked something for a certain amount of time and didn't let users use it. Our third and last example is CIH. This malware is mainly based on Microsoft Windows 9X. This being an example of new hardware. Now that we are done talking about the past, let's talk about the present of threat landscape. This pertains to the period of the early 2000 to the present year. I'll mainly talk about the Stuxnet, Stuxnet worm and Shamoon virus, as they are good examples of threat landscape of the modern era, but just like in the past, I'll also bring other lesser examples. First up is the Stuxnet worm. This was an attack on industrial sectors, mainly the machinery and assembly lines, and on assembly lines. This was also an attack in a certain area, Iran and nuclear facilities. Stuxnet used a zero, used zero day vulnerabilities. Zero day vulnerabilities are vulnerabilities that responders have zero days to respond to when the attackers, when the hackers attack. Unlike other worms that spread through the internet, this worm spread through USB. This worm would also go on to be named the first cyber weapon. Next up is the Shamoon virus. This virus is also targeted on sectors, mainly electrical and civil sectors in Saudi Arabia and Gulf states, 
Like Stuxnet, it was also a cyber weapon meant for espionage in the Middle East. This was also named the most complex malware found. Now we'll talk about other examples. The first, first example is Sircom, which mainly spreads through email on Windows based systems. This being an example of vulnerability on email on Windows systems. Second and last example is email war war between the authors Bagel, Maidu, and Netsky, and which was an example of an attack on a user. It's hard to know what the threat landscape of the future will look like, but we can try and guess what it will look like through the use of influences, such as vulnerabilities, new software, new hardware, new ways to process data, and global events. So I created a list of things to consider and try and guess how the future threat landscape will be affected by them. First off is the new OS system, which may reveal vulnerabilities later on that cyber criminals could use as they would have more features in the last OS. Second is global conflicts. One major example I can think of is the current Russian-Ukraine conflict happening at the moment. Cyber criminals can choose which side they want to be on and then e attack at the other, which is an example of attacking a certain group of people in an area. It through uh, three is the current unknown vulnerability, vulnerabilities. These are vulnerabilities that cyber criminals could use to bypass di defenses that we set up in the future. Four and five is the new OS and hardware, and they are very similar, be being that because each tends to add new features in their last, it could create vulnerabilities for cyber criminals to take advantage of. Six and lastly is malware. As defenses get stronger, malware gets smarter. This could greatly impact how we defend against malware in the future as well as how we look for it. Thank you for listening to me and here are my sources.